everyone, and I know I've been telling you I'm going to teach you some more of the sign language for Jesus Loves Me, and I think we're going to do that today. So let's review. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. And the next one we're going to do is Bible. And to do Bible, you make the Jesus sign and then a book. The Bible untells, you point to your throat, and then come out. Me, and for so, you point to your mouth, and then out. The Bible tells me so. That's a lot to fit in. The Bible tells me so. So we have, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's do that ending again. The Bible tells me so. Okay, here we go. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Jesus loves the children dear, children far away or near. They are safe when in his care, every day and everywhere. And here we go again. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy thine. Thou hast fled and died for me. I will henceforth live for thee. And here we go. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's do it slow. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, 
how that goes. See if we can remember it for next week also. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Fast and funny, bold and bright, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. So the fast children, the funny children, the bold children, the bright children. Jesus loves them all. Jesus calls the children dear, come to me and never fear, for I love the little children of the world. I will take you by the hand, lead you to the better land, for I love the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Tall and skinny, kind and shy, all are sparkles in his eye. Jesus loves the little children of the world. The tall children, the silly children, the kind children, the shy children. Jesus loves them all. Jesus is the shepherd true, and he'll always stand by you, for he loves the little children of the world. He's a savior great and strong, who'll protect you from the wrong, for he loves the little children of the world. Jesus knows the little children, all the children of the world. From China to Peru, all are special just like you. Jesus loves the little children of the world. So he doesn't just love you, he knows you. He knows every single one of you. Everything that you are. I am praying, Lord, to you that you'll tell me what to do, for you love the little children of the world. I will love my fellow friends and be faithful to the end, for you love the little children of the world. So, because Jesus loves us, we will love others. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. From a mountain, farm, or town, Jesus never lets us down. Jesus loves the little children of the world. So it doesn't matter where you're from, Jesus loves you. Well, our story today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Out of the heart come evil thoughts. Out of the heart come evil thoughts. Where sins come from? Donzel had a dream. He dreamed that all his sisters and brothers, his father and mother, and all the neighbors could see everything he was thinking. Even when he thought something that was bad, everybody could see it. In his dream, he ran away because he didn't think anybody would love him anymore. Denzel was glad when he woke up and realized it was only a dream. It was bad enough to think bad things, but to have people see them would be terrible. He was glad that no one could really see what he was thinking. Would you like it if people could always see what you were thinking? I know I wouldn't. All of us think bad things sometimes. And all the bad things we do come from our thinking. Why do we say mean words? Because first we think and feel them. 
Why do we do mean things? Because we think of doing them. Jesus said, Out of the heart come evil thoughts. And when we think wrong, we do wrong. Jesus forgives our wrong thoughts and deeds and wants us to think only good things. He will help us do it. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Father in Heaven, please take away all the bad and mean things we think and do. Make our hearts clean and our thinking right by giving us your Holy Spirit. We ask this for Jesus' sake, who died to save us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, why did Donzel want to run away? Because he had a dream that everybody could see what he was thinking. And he didn't think people would love him anymore if they could really see what he was thinking. Why would you not want everyone to see what you're thinking? Well, we might be thinking things that aren't kind. We might be thinking something mean. Or unkind. How many people are there who never think bad things? Nobody. Because none of us are perfect. The only person who never thinks bad things is Jesus. Where does our wrong thinking come from? It comes from our heart because we are sinners that need a Savior who washes away our sins and cleans our heart. Of course, Jesus. Well, today I have some songs from Sleeping Beauty. So I'm going to turn this over to the piano and do some songs from Sleeping Beauty for you. is called Sing a Smiling Song. When you have a busy, busy day, here is how to turn your work to play. Here's a little recipe that can't go wrong. Just sing a smiling song. When you too much to do, just sing a smiling song. Turn the corners of your mouth up and think about something happy. That's pretty good advice. And this one's called I Wonder. And like in the other Disney ones I've done, this is when she's thinking about finding a prince and falling in love and living happily ever after. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why each little bird has a someone to sing to, sweet things to, a gay little mock melody. I wonder. Thank you. 
last one I'm going to do right now is called Once Upon a Dream. read you the story of Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. In a faraway land, long ago, lived King Stephen and his fair queen. For many years, they had longed for a child, and finally their wish was granted. A daughter was born, and they called her Aurora, after the goddess of the dawn, for she filled their lives with sunshine. To celebrate her birth, a great holiday was proclaimed throughout the kingdom. Knights and ladies, townspeople and peasants, all dressed in their finest clothes and bringing gifts, came to the palace at the king's invitation to see the new baby and wish her well. King Hubert who ruled the neighboring country, arrived with his young son, Prince Philip. The two kings had long dreamed of uniting their lands by marriage of the two children, and on this occasion, they announced the betrothal of the infant Princess Aurora to Prince Philip. Suddenly, gliding down a shaft of sunlight that slanted into the great hall, the tiny figures of three good fairies appeared, waving their magic wands. They floated over to examine the display of the baby's presence. Then they approached the cradle to bestow their gifts on Princess Aurora. Little princess, my gift shall be the gift of beauty, said Flora, as her wand showered sparkles of fairy dust. Tiny princess, my gift shall be the gift of song, said Fauna. But just as the third fairy, Meriwether, was about to bless the infant with her gift of happiness, a wind blew the castle doors open. There was a blinding flash of lightning. And Maleficent, the evil witch, stood in the center of the hall, furious at not being invited to the festivities. Raising her arms, she announced, I, too, shall bestow a gift on the child. The princess shall indeed grow in grace and beauty. Beloved by all who know her, but before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. The poor queen lifted her baby from the cradle and held her close, as if to protect her from the witch's terrible words. The guards encircled Maleficent, Maleficent, sorry, and lunged at her with their spears. But with her powerful magic, 
She surrounded herself with flames and vanished in a puff of smoke. Meriwether, who still had her gift to give, quickly waved her wand above the baby, saying, Do not despair, O king and queen. Though I have not the power to undo this fearful curse, I can't help. Then, as her wand created magic pictures in the air, she chanted, Sweet princess, if through this wicked witch's trick, a spindle should your finger prick, a ray of hope there still may be in this gift I give to thee. Not in death, but just in sleep. This fateful prophecy you'll keep, and from this slumber you shall wake. When true love's kiss, the spell shall break. King Stephen, still fearful for his daughter's life, decreed that every spinning wheel and spindle in the kingdom should on that very day be burned. A huge bonfire was built in the courtyard, and every spinning wheel was destroyed. The three fairies were not sure that that was enough to keep the princess safe from harm. They persuaded the king and queen to let them hide the baby princess. They would take her to live deep in the forest, all of them disguised as peasants. And so, for 16 long years, the princess, called Briar Rose by the three good fairies, grew up with them, hidden away in the woodcutter's cottage with birds and forest creatures for her friends. Maleficent tried to, in vain to find the girl, but the good fairies kept her whereabouts well concealed. All these years they lived as mortals, never using their magic for fear that if they did, Maleficent would be able to trace them by its telltale glow. But... On the princess's 16th birthday, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether wanted to surprise her with a cake and a new dress. They sent her out to pick berries in the woods, and then they set to work baking a cake and sewing a dress. The cake was a disaster. The dress was awful. I'm going to get our magic wands, Meriwether declared. You know, I think she's right, Fauna agreed. It was the only way they had ever made anything. wands sent their rays of colored magic shooting around the room, and soon the cake turned into a pastry cook's masterpiece, the dress into a beautiful gown. Unfortunately, the colored sparkles from their magic drifted up the chimney and out into the sky above the cottage. There, Maleficent's raven, who had been hunting for the princess, saw the magic traces and flew back to his mistress to report that he had found the fairy's hiding place at last. Meanwhile, Prince Philip, who happened to be riding through the forest, heard a sweet song. Searching for the singer, he found Briar Rose dancing with the woodland creatures, and he joined them. As they sang together, he and the girl fell in love on the instant. But it was growing late, and Briar Rose had to leave. When will I see you again? the eager prince asked her. Come to the cottage in the glen this evening, the girl said. I will be there with my three guardians. And she hurried home to tell Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether the wonderful news. The fairies had news of their own for the girl. You are really the Princess Aurora, my dear, began Flora. And tonight we're taking you back to your father, King Stephen. Sadly, Briar Rose allowed herself to be led away from the cottage before Prince Philip came for their meeting. The fairies brought her to her room in the castle, where she threw herself on the bed sobbing. Let her have a few moments alone, said Flora, as they closed the door behind them. Poor dear. King Stephen and King Hubert had been celebrating the return of the princess and toasting the future union of their children and their kingdoms. At that moment, the arrival of Prince Philip interrupted their revelries. Father, he announced excitedly, I have just met the girl I am going to marry. Not Princess Aurora, but a peasant girl. On hearing this, King Hubert raged at his son. When that did no good, he pleaded and cajoled, all to no avail. Prince Philip insisted he would marry the girl he loved, and he galloped off to meet Briar Rose at her cottage in the woods, leaving his father in despair. 
All this time, Princess Aurora had been weeping alone in her room. There, Maleficent, disguised as a wisp of smoke, cast a spell on the girl. and led her to a secret room in which there was a magic spinning wheel, the only one left in the entire land. What can this be? Aurora wondered. And then she heard a voice commanding, Touch the spindle. Her hand reached out to the spindle, it pricked her finger, and all at once the princess fell to the floor in a swoon. When the three fairies found her stretched out on the stone floor, they berated themselves for having left the princess unguarded for even a minute. They carried her to the finest apartment in the palace and laid her on a bed, all embroidered with gold and silver. The princess was as beautiful as a little angel, her cheeks still rosy, her lips coral. And indeed, although her eyes were shut, she breathed very softly, so they knew that she was not dead. Come, said Flora. We'll put everyone in the castle to sleep until the princess awakens. The fairy sprinkled sleep dust on King Stephen, his queen, King Hubert, the soldiers and guards, the flag carriers, the servants, even on the fountains in the courtyard and the candles in the banquet hall. Then they flew off to find Prince Philip, for only he could awaken the princess. When Philip arrived at the cottage in the forest, Maleficent's henchmen were waiting him. They chained him and locked him in the witch's dungeon, where he was taunted by Maleficent. She showed him a picture of his peasant girl, Briar Rose, asleep in the tower of King Stephen's castle, and told him she was the Princess Aurora, doomed to sleep, until his kiss awakened her. Then, laughing cruelly, Maleficent left the prince, tugging at his chains, locked in the dungeon. It was there the three fairies found him and released him. Arming the prince with the mighty sword of truth and the enchanted shield of virtue, they helped him escape from Maleficent's castle. When Philip reached the castle of King Stephen, he found the walls overgrown with a forest of thorns, while a fire-spouting dragon, Maleficent in disguise, guarded the drawbridge. The fairy sprinkled magic dust on the prince's sword, chanting, Now, sword of truth, fly swift and sure, that evil die and good endure. At which, the sword flew straight to the dragon's heart, slaying the beast, who turned back into Maleficent as it died. The prince ran up the steps of the tower two at a time, past all the sleeping courtiers, until he reached the chamber where Princess Aurora, his beloved Briar Rose, lay. Gently he kissed her. The princess awakened, smiled at Philip, and the whole room lit up. The fountains in the courtyard started to play again. Candles flamed once more. The court awoke, and trumpets sounded from the balcony as the prince and princess walked down the grand stairway, hand in hand. Then, before the delighted eyes of King Stephen, the queen and King Hubert, Philip and Aurora began to dance to the strains of a romantic waltz. Watching from the musician's balcony, Fauna started to cry. Why, Fauna, Flora exclaimed, whatever is the matter now? Fauna sobbing said, oh, I just love happy endings. And indeed, Philip and Aurora lived happily ever after. I'm going to turn back around to the piano.
guess your song made it to Prince Philip, didn't it? met and fell in love out in the woods, but still recognized each other back at the palace. And now the smiling song again. When you have a busy, busy day, here's how to turn your work to play. Here's a little recipe. smile because Jesus loves us. He died for us because he loves us. So let's review our little refrain. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Remember, Bible is Jesus than a book. The Bible tells, touch your throat, bring it out, tells me so. The Bible tells me so. So I'm going to play the piano, and I want you to see if you can do the refrain sign language without my help. Jesus loves you. And I'm going to go ahead and do Jesus loves the little children. Yellow, black, and white. 
So Jesus loves you, no matter the color of your skin, no matter whether you're from the city or from the country, no matter whether you're fast, funny, kind, shy, bold, silly, or any of the other words that I've sung. Jesus loves you. He loved you enough to die for you. And that should make you happy. Have a great day. I love you. I miss you. Bye.